Today, we're going to be tying a fly called the Stay Hungry. This fly has so much action in the water due to being tied with craft fur. It has a very large profile, and when tied correctly can push a lot of water. We will start our fly by wrapping the thread all the way back to the bend of the hook. At this point, I like to add head cement. This fly takes a while to tie, so I like to make sure it's very durable. Bring your thread back up the shank of the hook, just shy of the eye of the hook. You can now go ahead and tie in your dumbbell eyes. For more information on tying in dumbbell eyes, click the dumbbell link in the video. Or, if you are on your cell phone, you can find the link in the description section. Now bring your thread back to the bend of the hook. You will want to isolate a section of craft fur off your patch. And cut it off very close to the base as we want as much length as possible. We can now tie that patch of craft fur in at the back of the fly to create a tail. We want to bulk up the body of the fly, so tie in the craft fur so the tag end is tied all the way up the hook shank. Then come back to the base of the tail with your thread. Next, we're going to measure a piece of grizzly hackle to about two-thirds of the length of the craft fur tail. You do not need the good stuff for this. The hackle you use for your woolly buggers will be just fine. Once measured, clip and prepare the hackle for tying in. For more information on preparing hackle, click the hackle link at the top of the video. Or, if you're using a mobile phone, the link is in the description. Now, we're going to tie the hackle in on the side of the fly. Make sure it is tied in so it doesn't rotate or get off center. Tying flies is all about manipulating materials, so make sure this hackle is positioned in a manner that sits nice on the tail. You can now tie in the other hackle in the same manner as the previous hackle feather, just on the other side of the fly. If your hackle has a slight curve to it, make sure that curve is angled upward. The next step is to tie in a body wrap. I like Easy Body because it is durable and very flashy, but it is expensive, so you can use anything that will give a pearl or flashy look. Now add a bit of head cement to keep everything in place. While this is not 100% necessary if you want a thinner body, I like adding a bit of dubbing to thicken the body. I am using Ice Dub because it is flashy, however you can use any type of dubbing you want. When dubbing this fly, make sure that you create a bit of a taper and dub all the way to the dumbbell eyes. Now we're going to wrap our body material around the dubbing all the way to the dumbbell eyes. Make sure to do this very tightly. Hold the hook to keep it from bending. The tighter you wrap, the more durable this fly is. Capturing the tag end, wrap very tightly. It is important to use strong thread as you will need to put some torque on this. To really keep the material in place, wrap the tag end up to the other side of the dumbbell eyes. I like to add a few strands of pearl flashaboo before this next step. Tie it in behind the dumbbells in the middle of the flashaboo clump. Then fold it over on itself and tie in that side as well. Prepare another clump of craft fur and tie it in just behind the dumbbell eyes. Leave a small section of the tag ends so that way they flare up. We will want to cut them to shape. 
I like cutting at an angle upward. It creates a bit of a tapered head. Now turn your fly over in the vise as we'll be working on the other side. Prepare one more clump of your white craft fur and tie it in just under the dumbbell eyes. You can make a few wraps back to create a bit of a collar with your thread. This will make the fly very durable. Cut these tag ends at an angle upwards also. I like to add some crystal flash at this point. I use the same color as the back color fur. Tie it in in the same manner as the pearl flashaboo in the earlier step. Now we will prepare a clump of our back color craft fur. I like this to be a very large and thick clump. If you need, add two clumps together. And make sure and don't pull out all the under fur as we want this to be sort of bushy. Tie this in with tight wraps to make the fly very durable. And to flare out the hair on the end. Now pull back the tag end of the fur and make a small tapered head behind the eye of the fly. Then you can whip finish the fly. Now trim the tag end of the craft fur at an angle upward. We want to create a tapered head, so be careful and shape these fibers to make a head. The last step is to add a bit of epoxy on the dumbbell side of the fly. Solaris makes this stuff called bone dry, and I love to use it for applications like this. It's easy to apply with their small brush, and the formula is very thin, so it penetrates the fibers of the thread very well. It cures with your UV light very quickly and will cure very hard. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other videos and please subscribe. Leave your questions in the comment section below. Now get off the internet and go catch some fish.